We're going to start with the type of equalizer called a graphic EQ first, because it's the most commonly encountered equalizer type in consumer audio equipment. There's basically no way that anyone has made it past the age of 10 without encountering a graphic equalizer, be it in the car, on the stereo, or in your television or computer. You'll recognize a graphic EQ because it will have some small faders. Here's an example of what you'll see either on a piece of hardware gear or on a screen in an app or car stereo. You'll have some number of faders, usually three for a really basic system, that sit at a middle point and give you the option of turning them up or down. So if we look at this unit on the frequency spectrum, we can think about what's happening to the sound. Here's our spectrum, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with 1k in the middle. And if we push our mid fader up, it will make a boost in the frequencies in the middle. We can push the low fader up and boost the bottom frequencies too. And in turn, if we pull the high fader down, it will pull the high frequencies down or cut them. And our end result is a changed frequency response for our sound. When we start to get into more professional audio equipment, we start to see units that divide the spectrum into even more frequency bands. Here's one that shows faders at every one third octave. This allows us to get a lot more specific with ranges of frequencies we can turn up and down across the spectrum. As you might recall from our earlier lesson on frequency, one octave up is double the frequency and one octave down is half the frequency. Octaves act as harmonics to fundamental frequencies, providing overtones and undertones in our sounds. As well, when sound is bouncing around in a space, rooms will often resonate at points an octave above or below the primary sound. This is due to the fact that for a frequency that resonates in a space, one that occurs at exactly half or double the length will also resonate in that same space because of the size. Therefore, having the bandwidths broken into thirds allows us to quickly identify the next octave point above or below the frequency that we're working with. As well, if we're not exactly sure which frequency we need to adjust, we can reach for a fader at the approximate area of the spectrum and test out faders in that area until we're sure we have the right one. One specific application of this style of graphic EQ is in live sound. In live sound, graphic equalizers are typically placed between the console's final mix output and the overall sound coming out of the speakers to allow you to be able to quickly and easily adjust the mix with the specific resonances of the room. Specifically, in the case of the monitor engineer, who is mixing the sound coming out of the speakers on stage that the performers are listening to, each monitor speaker will have its own dedicated graphic EQ, so that the engineer can use it to quickly and easily eliminate frequencies that are most likely to cause feedback. Feedback, of course, is that squealing, screeching sound that happens when we put the sound from a microphone through a speaker and then the mic picks up that sound as it comes out of the speaker. The sound system keeps playing the sound through the speaker and the mic keeps picking it up over and over until it becomes a loop and it starts to scream. The frequencies that end up feeding back will be those that arrive in phase from the speaker into the mic or out of the speaker off a wall into the mic or out of the speaker off the brim of the singer's hat and into the mic. As we know, when a frequency is in phase, it doubles the amplitude. So frequencies that are the right length to be in phase in this situation will just keep doubling over and over and will become louder and louder than everything else. But if we can identify those frequencies and turn them down with our graphic EQ, we will stop the feedback loop. <laughs>